A very good evening friends. I welcome you all to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by the Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 10th November 2023. Before entering our discussion, I have an important announcement to make. This is regarding preliminary test series. Batch 3 of the Shankar IAS Academy's pre-stamming is about to begin. The orientation session of the batch 3 will be conducted on 16th November and the first test will be on the same date. It includes 48 tests including the mock test and CSA test. The test will be conducted in both online and offline mode. So go and register and enrich your prelim score. Here are the list of articles which we are going to discuss today. So without wasting time, let us get into discussion. Look at this economy article. RBI governor says that the headline inflation will decline from 6.7% in 2022-23 to 5.4% in 2023-24. However, the governor highlights the vulnerability of inflation to potential food price shocks. Additionally, he notes that the challenges for global economy have increased in recent times. This is particularly due to the various geopolitical tensions in West Asia. See, this is the crux of the article. So, in this context, we will briefly learn about the various core economic topics like inflation, consumer price index and wholesale price index. First, let us see about inflation. Inflation refers to the increase in the price of goods and services. In other words, we can say that inflation is the condition where the purchasing power of money decreases and the value of goods and services increases. You would have seen in news about the rate of interest. What does it mean? The inflation rate simply means the rate at which the prices have been increasing and often it is expressed as a percentage value. CPA and WPA are among the few indices used to measure the inflation rate. Now let us see about CPA and WPA. First we will look at CPA. CPA refers to the inflation at retail level and the data about CPA is compiled by National Statistic Office of the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. The value of CPA is calculated from the increase in the price of goods which includes food and beverages, clothing, footwear and housing etc. Note that the highest weightage among these goods is given to the food and beverages which accounts for 45.86% of the total weightage. Moving on, let us see about WPA. WPA generally refers to the inflation at wholesale market and the data about WPA is compiled by Department for Promotion of Industry and Internal Trade DPIIT under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry. The value of WPA is calculated from the increase in the price of goods of some basket of commodity which includes primary article, fuel and power and manufactured products. The highest weightage among these goods is given to the manufactured products which accounts for 64.23% of the total weightage. Guys know that the base year for the calculation of both CPA and WPA is 2011-12 and know that they are released on a monthly basis. Here one important point to be noted is that the changes in the price of services like health care and banking transaction are taken into account while calculating the consumer price index and know that they will not be included in the calculation of WPA. This is about this news discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the basis of inflation and we also saw about the two commonly used indices that is CPA and WPA. With this learned points, let us conclude this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis. Take a look at this news article. Yesterday, the Supreme Court directed the Chief Justices of all High Courts to form a special bench in their respective High Courts. The purpose of the special bench is to monitor the criminal trials of people representatives that is MPs and MLAs. This will ensure that the justice is delivered in those cases. Know that this step has been taken by the judiciary to expedite the disposal of cases against the MPs and MLAs. As per this news article which is given, nearly 40% of MPs and MLAs have criminal backgrounds. This is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through what is criminalization of politics and their impacts on Indian democracy using our mains answer writing approach. Let me read out a question for you. Indian democracy faces various challenges due to the criminalization of politics. Examine the reasons, challenges and steps taken in this regard. See, this is the question 
which is asked for 15 marks and you have to write within 250 words this question can be asked in the gs paper 2 under the syllabus of parliament and state legislatures structure functioning conduct of business powers and privileges and issue arising thereof now moving on to answer now let us see how to approach this question the only keyword in this question is examine we know that when the keyword examine is given we are expected to present the clarity about various perspective of the issue and in the conclusion you have to take a balanced answer this is how we are going to approach this question now in the introduction part you can write what is criminalization of politics and provide suitable data to substantiate your answer for example you can write like this the criminalization of politics refers to the phenomenon where individuals with criminal backgrounds are those who are charged or convicted of criminal offenses actively participates in the politics let us see a data to understand it better according to the report by association of democratic reforms or adr and national election watch new in the 2019 lok sabha elections 43 percentage of the winners had declared criminal cases against themselves and know that 29 percentage of them had serious criminal offenses like murder attempt to murder kidnapping and crime against women this increasing number of members with criminal antecedents threatens the survival of true democracy in india you can write like this in your introduction part now moving on to the main part of the answer here you can split the body part into three parts in the first part you can list the reasons for increase in the criminalization of politics in the second part you can write about the challenges posed by it and in the third part you should write about the steps which are taken to combat the criminalization of politics okay now let us start with the first part of the body here what are all the reasons for increase in the criminalization of politics guys you can write like firstly the reasons is the nexus between politicians and criminal elements see politicians seek support from the individuals who are generally involved in criminal activities for many reasons the reasons like buying of votes and other illegitimate practices in exchange of the political patronage which can be given by the politician this connection often leads to backing of candidates with criminal backgrounds during the elections secondly use of money and muscle power candidates with serial record seems to do well despite the public image this is largely due to the ability to finance their own elections and bring substantive resource to the respective parties and sometimes voters are left with no option as all the competing candidates have criminal records against them thirdly vested interest people generally vote through a narrow prism of community interest and neglect the criminal background of politicians this can lead to a situation where politician with criminal backgrounds are elected simply because they are the members of their particular community to put it simply according to the old saying indians don't cast their vote they cast their votes now let us go to the fourth point slow judicial process provides opportunity for politician to thrive even though with the criminal background for example in the lilly thomas versus union of india case supreme court declared that any mp or mla who is convicted of a crime and sentenced to prison for a term of 2 years or more would be disqualified from holding office the court also declared that a convicted lawmaker could not contest an election or continue as a member of legislature while the appeal was pending but as we all know the slow judicial process gives enough time and immunity to the accused mp or mla until she or he completes his office the fifth important reason is the absence of proper laws and rules for governing the procedure of election we know that there is only model code of conduct or mcc which is in being operation during elections and we also know that they are not enforced by any statute these are the reasons or factors which are contribute to the increase in the criminalization of politics moving on to the second part here you have to write about the challenges which are posed by the criminalization of politics the first challenge is it causes threat to democracy when politician with criminal background holding the office they can use their power to subvert the various systems including judicial system and this will create a culture of impunity this poses a serious threat to democracy as it undermines the rule of law 
and democratic institutions. The second challenge is it limits the voter to elect a suitable candidate. So it is against the ethos of free and fair elections which is a bedrock of democracy. Thirdly, it creates governance issues. When the politicians with criminal backgrounds when they are holding office means they are more likely to be interested in serving their own interest rather than the interest of people. This can lead to the lack of good governance and failure to address important issues which are hinging our country. The fourth challenge is it leads to a situation where corrupt practices are getting normalized in the society and becomes part of the political system. This makes it difficult for honest people to work efficiently and it will ultimately erode the public trust in the government institutions. Fifthly, it causes social disharmony by introducing a culture of violence in the society and sets a bad precedent for the youths to follow. This again reduces the people's faith in democracy as a system of governance. Guys, you can write these points as the challenges posed by the criminalization of politics. Okay, now moving on to the third part. Here, you have to list the steps which are being taken to combat the criminalization of politics. Firstly, you can write about the legal steps which are taken. The first step is Section 8 of the Representation of People Act 1951. See, this act provides for a disqualification on being convicted for certain offences. According to this act, an individual punished with a jail term of more than two years cannot stand in election for the next six years after his or her jail term gets over. But sadly, the law does not bar individuals who have criminal cases pending against them for contesting elections. So, this disqualification of candidates depends on their conviction in their cases. Secondly, you can write about the government initiatives. See, in 2017, the union government started a scheme to establish 12 special courts to fast track the trial of criminal cases against MPs and MLAs. Third, you can write about Supreme Court judgments. In 2002, in the case of ADR or Association of Democratic Reforms versus Union of India, the Supreme Court directed the Election Commission to issue guidelines to ensure that the candidates with criminal records were not given tickets to contest in the election. The court also ordered that the criminals must the candidates must disclose their criminal records in the nomination papers. Moving on to the second judgment, in 2018, in Public Interest Foundation versus Union of India, the Supreme Court directed political parties to publish the criminal records of their respective candidates on the websites, social media handles and newspapers. The court also directed the Election Commission to create a framework to ensure that the information on criminals on candidates criminal records were disseminated effectively. Thirdly, in 2019, Mahipal Singh Rana vs. State of UP, the Supreme Court directed the central government to set up special courts to expedite the cases against politicians. See, these are some of the steps taken to combat the criminalization of politics. Finally, in the conclusion part, you can write that addressing the criminalization of politics in India requires a multifaceted approach through legal, electoral and social reforms. It demands a collective effort from political parties, civil society and judiciary to strengthen the democratic institutions and restore the public faith in political process. See, that's all about this news discussion. In this discussion, we saw about what is criminalization of politics, we saw about the reasons for increase in the criminalization, we also saw about the challenges which are posed by the phenomenon, we also saw about the challenges posed by those phenomenon and finally we saw about the steps taken to combat the criminalization of politics. See, with these learned points, we shall complete this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis. Look at this news article. US Secretary of Defense, Leo J. Aston visited India for the 2 plus 2 ministerial dialogue on Friday. He told that there will be discussions about the rising tensions in West Asia. Moreover, know that there are two significant defense deals which are in progress between India and US. These deals will also be discussed in the 2 plus 2 summit. The first deal involves the purchase of 
தேர்ட்டி ஒன் எம்கியூ நைன் பி ஹை ஆல்டிடியூட் லாங் என்டியூரன்ஸ் ட்ரோன்ஸ் த செகண்ட் டீல் இஸ் அபவுட் மேனுஃபேக்சரிங் ஜென்ரல் எலக்ட்ரிக் எஃப் ஃபோர் ஒன் ஃபோர் ஜெட் இன்ஜின்ஸ் இன் இந்தியா சி தீஸ் இன்ஜின்ஸ் வில் பவர் த இண்டிஜினியஸ் லைட் கோம்பேக்ட் ஏர்க்ராஃப்ட் எல்சிஏ எம்கே டூ த ஆன் கோயிங் ப்ராசஸ் ஃபார் தீஸ் டீல்ஸ் இஸ் எக்ஸ்பெக்டட் டு பி கம்ப்ளீட்டட் நெக்ஸ்ட் இயர் திஸ் இஸ் ஆல் அபவுட் தி நியூஸ் விச் ஆஸ் கிவன் ஹியர் இன் திஸ் கான்டெக்ஸ்ட் லெட் அஸ் சி அபவுட் டூ ப்ளஸ் டூ டைலாக் அண்ட் வேரியஸ் டிஃபென்ஸ் அக்ரிமெண்ட்ஸ் பிட்வீன் இந்தியா அண்ட் யூஎஸ் ஃபஸ்ட் ஆஃப் ஆல் வாட் இஸ் டூ ப்ளஸ் டூ டைலாக் த டூ ப்ளஸ் டூ டைலாக் ரெஃபர்ஸ் டு அ டிப்ளமேட்டிக் அண்ட் ஸ்ட்ராட்டஜிக் மீட்டிங் விச் இஸ் யூஸ்வலி ஹெல்ட் பிட்வீன் த டாப் டிஃபென்ஸ் அண்ட் ஃபாரின் அஃபீஷியல்ஸ் ஆஃப் டூ கண்ட்ரீஸ் இன் திஸ் டைலாக் ஃபார்மேட் த டிஃபென்ஸ் மினிஸ்டர் அண்ட் ஃபாரின் மினிஸ்டர் ஆஃப் ஒன் கண்ட்ரி மீட் வித் இயர் கவுண்டர் பார்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் அனதர் கண்ட்ரி தே வில் டிஸ்கஸ் அண்ட் கோஆர்டினேட் ஆன் வேரியஸ் பைலேட்ரல் ரீஜனல் அண்ட் குளோபல் இஷ்யூஸ் த நேம் டூ ப்ளஸ் டூ சிக்னிஃபைஸ் த டூ கீ ஏரியாஸ் விச் இஸ் இன்வால்வ்ட் இன் திஸ் டிஸ்கஷன் தே ஆர் ஃபாரின் அண்ட் டிஃபென்ஸ் அஃபேர்ஸ் திஸ் ஃபார்மேட் அலோஸ் ஃபார் காம்ப்ரிஹென்சிவ் டிஸ்கஷன் அண்ட் செக்யூரிட்டி டிஃபென்ஸ் கோஆப்ரேஷன் அண்ட் டிப்ளமேட்டிக் மேட்டர்ஸ் அண்ட் தேர் பை this discussions will enhance the strategic communication between the two nations the us often conducts 2 plus 2 dialogue with the key partners this includes india see us is india's oldest and most important 2 plus 2 talk partner the first 2 plus 2 dialogue between the two countries were held during trump administration in 2018 with these dialogues india and us have signed three foundational pacts for deep military and strategic cooperation between the two countries these foundational pacts are logistic exchange memorandum of agreement or lemoa in 2016 communication compatibility and security agreement comcasa in 2018 basic exchange and cooperation agreement beca in 2020 besides usa india also has 2 plus 2 dialogues with other three strategic partners they are australia Japan and Russia. See, this is all about the discussion on 2 plus 2 dialogue. With these learned points, let us move on to the next news article for our discussion. Look at this news article. The Supreme Court of India has given the government a four-week deadline to finalize a mensural hygiene policy of India. This policy will be focusing on the distribution of sanitary napkins. The CJA directed the government to establish a national model for the number of girls toilet in government aided and residential schools see despite many advancements affordability and access hurdles to menstrual health still affects many women this is evident in semi urban and rural areas of india see let us see the data to understand it better the national family health survey fi indicates that the 73 percentage of rural women and 90 percentage of urban women use hygienic method of menstrual protection this shows that there has been an improvement in menstrual hygiene practices but still lacunae exist in rural and semi urban areas this is the crux of the article in our discussion we are going to see various initiatives taken by government to ensure women's health before that first look at the status of reproductive health of women in india at the adolescent age 70% of the girls are anemic and their problems related to menstrual health and hygiene often go unaddressed also more than 70% of women are suffering from reproductive tract infections which may lead to infertility abortions etc as per the national family health survey fi tripura recorded the highest afr or adult fertility rate with 69 birth per 1000 women the lowest adolescent of afr was recorded in Goa with 14 birth per 1000 women. Here, the adolescent fertility rate or AFR means annual number of birth to a woman who is aged between 15 to 19 years for every 1000 women population in India. Let us put the data into perspective. See, in India, 1 in 3 women are undernourished and 1 in 2 women are anemic. In addition to this, due to poor economic background many women in india work up to the last days of their pregnancy this also add to their undernourishment know that an undernourished mother 
ஆல்மோஸ்ட் இன்னேவிட்டபிளி கிவ் பர்த் டு எ லோ பர்த் வெயிட் பேபி தட் இஸ் அண்டர் நோரிஷ்மெண்ட் இஸ் இன்டர் ஜென்ரேஷ்னல் டு அட்ரஸ் திஸ் இஷ்யூஸ் த கவர்மெண்ட் லான்ச்ட் வேரியஸ் இனிஷியேட்டிவ்ஸ் லெட் அஸ் சீதம் ஒன் பை ஒன் த ஃபஸ்ட் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் இஸ் லக்ஷியா இட் மீன்ஸ் லேபர் ரூம் குவாலிட்டி இம்ப்ரூவ்மெண்ட் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் த எய்ம் இஸ் டு இம்ப்ரூவ் த குவாலிட்டி ஆஃப் கேர் இன்த லேபர் ரூம் அண்ட் மெட்டர்னிட்டி ஆப்ரேஷன் தேட்டர்ஸ் நோ தட் த லக்ஷியா ப்ரோக்ராம் வில் பி இம்ப்ளிமெண்டட் பை ஆல் மெடிக்கல் காலேஜ் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல்ஸ் டிஸ்ட்ரிக் ஹாஸ்பிட்டல்ஸ் ஃபஸ்ட் ரெஃபரல் யூனிட்ஸ் அண்ட் கம்யூனிட்டி ஹெல்த் சென்டர்ஸ் த செகண்ட் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் இஸ் ஜனனி சுரக்ஷா யோஜனா இட் இஸ் அ சேஃப் மதர்ஹுட் இன்டர்வென்ஷன் அண்டர் த நேஷ்னல் ஹெல்த் மிஷன் சி ஜேஎஸ்ஒய் இஸ் அ ஹண்ட்ரட் பர்சன்ட் சென்ட்ரலி ஸ்பான்சர்ட் ஸ்கீம் அண்ட் இட் இன்டெகிரேட்ஸ் த கேஸ் அசிஸ்டன்ஸ் வித் டெலிவரி அண்ட் போஸ்ட் டெலிவரி கேர் த எய்ம் ஆஃப் ஜனனி சுரக்ஷா யோஜனா இஸ் டு ரெடியூஸ் த மெட்டர்னல் அண்ட் நியோநோட்டல் மொர்டாலிட்டி அமாங் ப்ரெக்னன்ட் உமன் எஸ்பெஷலி ஃப்ரம் த மார்ஜினலைஸ்ட் செக்ஷன் ஆஃப் தி சொசைட்டி சி த தேர்ட் இனிஷியேட்டிவ் இட் இஸ் பிரதான் மந்திரி மாத்ரு வந்தன யோஜனா ஆர் பிஎம்எம்ஒய்ஒய் ஆர் பிஎம்எம்விஒய் சி மாத்ரு வந்தன யோஜனா இஸ் அ மெட்டர்னிட்டி பெனிஃபிட் ப்ரோக்ராம் இட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ எ சென்ட்ரலி ஸ்பான்சர்ட் ஸ்கீம் விச் இஸ் இம்ப்ளிமெண்டட் பை மினிஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் உமன் அண்ட் சைல்டு டெவலப்மெண்ட் சி த ஸ்கீம் ஹேஸ் டூ அப்ஜெக்டிவ்ஸ் த ஃபஸ்ட் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் is to improve the health seeking behavior of the pregnant and lactating mothers here the health seeking behavior means the actions people take to look after their health the second objective is to provide partial compensation for the wage loss which are faced by mothers during their pregnancy both these objectives will in turn aims to address the undernourishment in pregnant and lactating women see the fourth initiative is pradhan mantri surakshit matritva abhiyan See, this initiative provides pregnant women a free of cost quality antenatal checkup by a specialist or medical officer on the 9th of every month. See, this is about the news discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the data regarding the reproductive health of women of India. And in the second part, we saw about the various steps taken by government to improve the reproductive health and maternity health of Indian women. See, with these learned points, let us take up the next news article for our discussion. Take a look at this news article. Yesterday, the Union government claimed in the Supreme Court that the Central Bureau of Investigation or CBA has its own boss and the government has no say in the registration, investigation and prosecution of cases. This is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through the basics of CBA and its independence. Before that, Let us see a historical background about CBA. See, during the period of World War II, a special police establishment or SPE was constituted in 1941. It was established in the Department of War of British India to enquire into the allegations of bribery and corruption related to war-related procurements. After independence, later on based on the recommendation of Santhanam Committee on the Prevention of Corruption, the delhi special police establishment act 1946 was enacted based on this act only cba was formalized as an agency of government of india the c the mandate of cba is to investigate the allegation of corruption in various wings of government so in this juncture let us see an important fact that the cba is not a statutory body but derives its power from delhi special police establishment act 1946 and moving on our discussion Currently, the CBI is functioning under Department of Personnel under Ministry of Personnel, Pension and Public Grievances. Know that it is the premier investigation police agency of India. In functioning its duty, it also provides assistance to other investigation agencies like Central Vigilance Commission, Lokpal in doing their respective duties. Know that it is also the nodal police agency of India which coordinates investigation on behalf of the CBI. interpol member countries see this is all about the basics of cba now let us see the type of cases which are handled by cba first is anti corruption cases see cba investigates cases under the prevention of corruption act 1988 under this act cba will investigate against the public officials and the employees of the central government it also investigates the employees of various central public sector undertakings other corporations or bodies owned or controlled by the government of india 
secondly with respect to economic crimes see cba investigates major financial scams and economic frauds of india which includes crimes related to fake indian currency bank frauds cyber crimes large scale smuggling of narcotics and antiques etc thirdly cba investigates special crimes which includes serious and organized crimes under ipc or other related acts know that this will be based on the request of state governments or on the orders of high courts or supreme courts let us see the various example to understand better see the special crimes including the cases of terrorism bomb blast kidnapping for ransom and other crimes which are committed by the mafias finally let us see the next function of cbi with respect to suomoto powers see cbi can suomoto take up investigation for offenses which are happening only in union territories in cases of states the central government can authorize cbi to investigate a crime in the state but note that it will be based on only with the consent of the concerned state government but there is also an exception if there is a supreme court or high court orders then the cbi can investigate the crime anywhere in the country even without the consent of the state now let us move on to the next part of discussion that is about the independence of cbi see the agency is completely independent with respect to the own cases where cbi is the only investigating agency but the problem is that the agency is dependent on home ministry for staffing and it also relies on ministry of law for lawyers and moreover cbi does not have functional autonomy to some extent in various cases moreover the cbi acts as per the procedure prescribed by code of criminal procedure which makes it as a police agency because of this reason only the cbi needs the consent of various state governments before it can make a present in that state this loophole can lead to a certain cases not being investigated at all and those cases seeing a silent deadlock moreover it is not financially independent as administrative and financial control of cbi rest with the ministry of personnel this is all about the discussion in this discussion we saw about the genesis of cbi and we saw about the functions of cbi that is all about the news discussion with this let us move on to the next part of our video that is to discuss the preliminary practice questions today we are having four questions let us solve them one by one look at the first question it's a previous or prelims question which appeared in 2020 prelims the question is consider the following statements the first statement the weightage of food in cpa is higher than that of in wpa see the first statement is right because from our discussion we know that the food holds the highest weightage in the calculation of consumer price index see the second statement this wpa does not capture the changes in the price of services which the cpa does see from our discussion we also know th that the second statement is also right because the changes in the price are taken into account only in cpa see the third statement reserve bank of india or rbi has now adopted wpa as a key measure of inflation and to decide on the key policy rate changes see third statement is wrong because rbi adopted consumer price index or cpa as a key measure of inflation see this is taken as per the recommendation of urjit patel committee so we can say that the third statement is wrong so by eliminating the third statement we know that the correct option is option a let us see the second question what is the primary focus of basic exchange and cooperation agreement beca which is often seen in the international news see out of the four option from our discussion we know that beca stands for defense and security collaboration between india and united states see we also know that this is one of the foundation agreements between india and us so the correct option is option c see the third statement consider the following schemes janani suraksha yojana janani shishu suraksha karyakram and the third one is pradhan mantri matru vandana yojana the question is which of the above schemes provide cash incentives to pregnant women look at the first statement option 1 is correct because statement 1 is correct because janani suraksha yojana is a safe motherhood intervention under national health mission know that it provides cash assistant with delivery and post delivery care so the first statement is correct see the second statement is wrong because jsk 
was launched to assure free and cashless services to pregnant women for deliveries like normal or cesarean operations. See, JSSK also provide treatment for newborns up to 30 days after birth. We have to be aware that this scheme does not carry cash assistant programming. So the second statement is wrong. As we have already discussed, statement 3 is correct as it also provides cash assistance. So by eliminating statement 2, we know that both 1 and 3 are correct. So the correct option is option B. Look at the final question of the day. The question is who among the following is consulted on the appointment of director of CBI? See the four options are given. We know that the director is appointed by the central government on the recommendation of committee. This committee consists of prime minister as a chairperson and leader of a portion of Lok Sabha and the chief justice of India or judge of Supreme Court as nominated by CJI. See this does not carry union home minister as one of the member. So by eliminating the statements 3 and 4 we know that the correct option is option D. If you like today's video like comment and share with your friends. For more updates regarding UPSC preparation subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy. Thank you for listening. Thank you.